I present the concept here of a book index, even though it's a little bit beyond where we are right now and you're learning about, um, well, about all these things, about schemas and instances, well, not instances, instances you pretty much know what you need to know about, but schemas and transforms. It's a little bit on the edge of what I expect you to know about this point, at this point in time. But it's an important concept and especially the way the schema is structured is important for you to know and so I've included it here because I think it's a, um, I think I want to get you thinking about that and at the very end of the class we're going to come back again to, uh, uh, to this structure and flesh this out and go quite a bit further with this idea, the idea that we're beginning in the book index. Um, I'll also let you know that the book index that I'm modeling here, to keep it simple, it's already a little bit more advanced than I would like to be at this point in the course, but to keep it simple um, I'm already going to impoverish that book index a little bit. It's going to be a little bit less functional than a book index that you'd see in a normal book. And so, um, for example, there's no terms and subterms in this in this uh, in this higher in this um, index. I'm keeping it just as a flat index to keep things simple for us. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, it might help you, in addition to having all of the sample files open, to actually get a book and look at a book that has a decent index in it, so that you can um, you can see these things in action in a printed book. And by the way, there's really no reason in the world, and, and to my mind, it's a, it's a great misfortune that our indexes on the web don't do exactly what book indexes do. Book indexes are wonderful tools for moving around in an information base, and no, no self-respecting um, book would go to press without one. Um, but somehow, we've left behind most of what you see in a book index um, on the web. And so I'd like you not to leave it behind. I'd like you to start thinking about the affordances, the way that book indexes work, and, um, uh, and this is the starter for that. Okay, so starting with the, um, starting with the, uh, uh, the schema here, we see this is also Audi, or at least this part of it is Audi, and this part of the book index is Audi because our terms are outside the sections that are being indexed. Our same old set of sections that we've been working with throughout this, throughout the index um, uh, area, throughout the index topic, are still being indexed by this, by this index. But this index is Audi because the terms that index the information are outside of the information. So each term has an ID, each term has a title, and you'll see where that ID comes up in, in a moment. Each, each, ID, each term has a title, each term has an ID. And then the terms have these other things. These are internal linkages from one term to another. Uh, a term can have a sequence, uh, excuse me, it has a choice of either, and this is important, a choice of either a C term ref ID or one or more C also term ref IDs. So let me unpack that. So the part about terms having IDs and terms having titles, that should be pretty straightforward for you by now. That shouldn't cause you any trouble. But let's work with that choice. First of all, the choice says either or, right? I either have branch one or branch two. But be careful with that choice. Be careful with applying that idea of either or to globally to um, choices because I can make an unbounded choice, which means I get to have that choice as many times as I want. So it's not always um, an exclusive or either branch A or branch B. In this case, it is. In this case, I get one choice, and so it's a choice between a single C term ref ID and, a C, and one or more C also term ref IDs. Um, and that choice itself, by the way, is optional, so I can have neither of those. So you can see the, the, the dim line going to the choice box indicating that the choice itself is optional. So I can have any of three cases here, nothing under there, one C term ref ID or one or more C also term ref IDs. Okay, so let's go into the idea of what does it mean, C term and C also term. Well, scan any good index and you'll see immediately what I, what I mean by that, or maybe you probably already know what I mean by that. C means there's a term in this index that's a better term for this word. So you'll see in the instance I have one that says um, uh, inverted file, C index. That means the word inverted file, while we recognize that you might use this for that other term index, it's not one of our preferred terms, so we want to switch you over to somewhere else in the index. We want to link you to a different part of the index where the term index, kind of an unfortunate, uh, <laughs> an unfortunate recursion there, but the, we're going to refer you from the word inverted file to the word index, internal to the index. It doesn't have anything to do with taking you somewhere in the information base. It's an internal linkage inside the access structure. So that's already a little bit more subtle than we've been so far. 
Um, so that's C. C also has a different meaning. C also means, yes, this is a term that, that we use. Yes, this is something that you should be familiar with or that, that we use to index this body of information. But there are other terms that you might also be interested in. There are ways of taking you to other parts of the index that you might not have thought to go to. So that's the notion of C and C also. And we can implement them very straight, in a very straightforward way, even though there's some sophistication here. It's not utter sophistication. It's not beyond your ability. But it is taking us a little bit further than we've been so far. And that's the idea of an optional choice, where we have one branch where we can have one of the thing on branch A or many on the things of branch B. I'm hoping you start to see, by the way, now that um, even though the rules of schemas are simple in and of themselves, the combinations of those rules, when you put the rules all together, they can be very complicated, they can be very subtle, and they can represent pretty much any, any concept of relationship that you can think of. So that's a schema. We'll take a brief look at the instance. You can see the instance looks pretty much, you know, you can almost squint your eyes and you can see a book index in here, right? We have the, we have the term, and then under the term, if there's a C or a C also, we have those kind of indented under the term. And so it almost has the look and feel of an index. It's an Audi index. And now I have to go to something that um, uh, I have to let you know about the other part of the, the schema, which I forgot to mention earlier before we went into the instance. And that's the index anchor. So the index itself is Audi. But looking at that index, where do I say what sections this term goes to? Right? There's no place in this schema, at least in this piece of the schema, that says that. So the index itself is Audi. But we have another piece of structure called the index anchor. That's any. And you can see that pictured on your screen as well. The index anchor um, shows you, or the index anchor is an inline element. It's just like a bold or an italic or a keyword. It can go interior to a paragraph. So we can put an anchor. An anchor means a place that I've latched onto, a place that I can get to, a place that I know about inside the flow of the text. Whether it's an a -H or excuse me, an, a, an HTML A tag that's used as an anchor, or when we use the word anchor in our schemas, it's really for the same purpose. To say I want to anchor this point of the, of the instance so that I can get to it later, so that I can identify it later. So we drop those anchors in various places in our instance to show where the, um, to show where the index goes. Um, and so you can see pictured in the instance, there's one, picture of the, uh, there's one picture of the instance, the part of the instance, the Audi part of the instance that defines the, uh, the index. And then another picture of a section where you can see index anchors circled on the picture of the section showing that we have references from inside the topics, from inside the sections, from inside the items, back to the index. So we have a kind of a two-way street here. The index is sitting out here is in, in, an, in an Audi place. It's not part of the sections. But inside the sections, we have little anchors. And those anchors are pointing outward. And this is kind of a, um, this is something that you'll see and may not have occurred to you yet. But when you're pointing from thing A to thing B inside of an instance, you can either point from inside A or you can point from inside B. In this case, we've chosen to point not from the, not from the index term into the section, but from the section into the index. And so a linkage, when you've pointed from A to B, B is also linked to A. You don't have to have links in both places. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, but the, the, the point here is that this is a hybrid structure. Some of the, some of the structure is outside, inside, is, is outside in an Audi index. And some of the structure is inside. Those anchors are inside. So this is hybrid. Some, of, some parts of it are any, some parts of it are Audi. The pointers are going from the sections to the index. And the reason for that is because I can drop one of those anchors anywhere I want inside the section. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bound to point to the section, the entire section, just because that's the only thing that has an ID. Now I've dropped an ID at an arbitrary place inside of the text. And if that text is five pages long, I want to be able to link to page four of the five pages of text that are in one section. And that internal anchor allows me to do that. It allows me to put points of reference anywhere I want inside of the text so that a keyword can link directly to the place where it's referenced.